Hey, Professor Primary. I really don't understand this secondary source thing. Please explain it again. The thing that makes secondary sources particularly problematic is that using them potentially results in a distortion of meaning. When you were a kid, did you play that telephone game? You all sit in a circle and one kid whispers a message into the ear of the next kid, who passes it on to the next kid, and so on around the circle. The fire chief took a speedboat to rescue a man who was drifting out to sea on an old log. The fire chief took a weed goat to rescue a man who was drifting out to sea on an old dog. The fire chief took a weed goat to rescue a man who was picking out a flea on an old dog. A fire chief in a weed coat rescued a man who was picking out fleas on an old dog. A retired thief in a tweed coat pursued a man trying to flee with his old dog. What this game illustrates is how distorted a message can become as it passes around the circle. That is the essence of the problem with secondary sources. When you read an article in the original source, you have a really clear sense of the context a person is using, the meaning behind what they are saying, how it fits with the rest of the article or chapter they have written. Imagine that a sentence I wrote in 2012 is paraphrased by someone else in 2015 in a way that adds their particular twist on what I meant by that statement. Then in 2017, someone else repeats that person's statement, but maybe they had a little different interpretation. By the time you get to 2020, I might be cited as saying something that doesn't capture at all what I actually meant, or what I actually believe. Instead, all of those slight adjustments and misinterpretations have accumulated over time. Imagine if I had written in 2012, secondary sources should only be used if there is no possibility of accessing the original source, and there is no way to support that key idea with another source. But the version that was passed on in 2020 was, if you can't talk to Freud directly, then nothing he had to say can be used in your writing. There's only a small grain of my original message in this statement. This potential for distortion of meaning is why misusing secondary sources is considered academic misconduct.